Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick. Well, the blockbuster deal has been just a few months in the works and now it is official. Pinsky Entertainment Corporation this week closing on the acquisition of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the NTT IndyCar Series and IMS Productions. Clearly, Roger Pinsky already has some very definitive ideas about what he wants to do with IMS and a passion for making it all happen. Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb hosted a special reception this week at Bankers Life Fieldhouse to welcome Roger Pinsky to Indy. That's where I sat down with the captain for an extended interview, and he told me what we can expect to see uh, in terms of changes at IMS for this year's Indy 500. Roger, thanks for joining us, and welcome to Indianapolis. Officially, you have been a frequent, uh, very high-profile visitor for uh, uh, many years now, literally part of the business community and a small group of sports franchise owners here. Um, what are your thoughts about Indianapolis and more broadly Indiana as you uh, begin this journey? Well, I think that, uh, number one, thanks uh, for having me today. It's, uh, it's an honor. Uh, certainly, uh, when I go back and think about uh, 1951, that's a lot before you were born probably, <laughs> go back to 1951 and my dad uh, you know, brought me to the Speedway for my first race, Lee Wallard won that race and I tend to look up in the sky right now in the last couple of days and think about, uh, I hope my dad's watching because I think about a 14 year old kid comes in the 500 and ends up uh, owning the track and having won 18 times here, it's, uh, it's really something that's uh, just hard to comprehend and uh, it, it's just amazing. Yeah. You have been a part of uh, many deals, high profile, large deals in your, your business uh, career. This one, uh, a big deal, it came together pretty quickly, uh, I, I would say. Can you walk us through, give us some insights or some details on how the deal came together so quickly? One thing I've learned, if deals take too long to do, they might not be very good. But, uh, you know, it's ironic. Uh, you know, Tony George and I have been friends. You know, we've been on other sides of the fence once in a while, but mm -hmm. basically pretty good friends. And I was at Laguna Seca, you know, for the last IndyCar race. Uh, and fortunately, uh, Newgarden won that race. We won the championship. But on the grid, you know, prior to the race, he said to me, he said, I want to get together and talk about the future. Well, you know, with Tony, I'm not sure really what that meant. I said, look, I'll call you. Well, obviously, I got home on Monday. We knew we were coming here on Thursday for the banquet. So I called him. I said, I'll meet you on Thursday. He said, well, meet us, meet me at the uh, Columbia Club and I'll co and come in a couple hours early. So I did. And I met with he and uh, Mark Miles and, and he rolled out the story about his mom. And, and I think it was uh, really heartfelt, uh, really a, a very you know, heartfelt discussion about his mom, his grandfather, the family. Uh, the decision by the trustees and that, that they would entertain a sale of the Speedway. Now, people have talked about buying it you know, over the years. I've heard it, I've heard it once, I've heard it 50 times, maybe once a year I was here. But this was, uh, this was real. And I listened and it really didn't say too much. And finally I said, I'm very interested. I'll sign a non-disclosure agreement tomorrow and let's start the process and think about that from that September date, late September to early November, we had a definitive merger agreement. And then some 60 days later, we're sitting here today, yesterday, uh, uh, we made our money transfer. So yeah. I guess you'd say that today we are the, the owners, but more important, I would really say, uh, Gary, that uh, is the way the transaction was handled. Uh, the professionalism within Holman, you know, Mark Miles and his team, really we had two or three people inside there. I had four people on our side. We used some tax consultants and very few legal uh, requirements. And we just marched through this. And as we went through the process, if we had any stumbling block, our teams did, Mark and I got on the phone in the evening or during the day and we solved it. Because we knew the confidentiality had to be key. Mm -hmm. And we knew we had to get it done because if we were gonna make any impact on this year's race, we couldn't be negotiating this thing on April 15th. So it was time of the essence. You know, it was the quality of the people we were dealing with, high integrity, and we knew a lot about the place. Now the little things, you know, the legal things, and so we had to go to the IFA, the Finance Authority. Uh, we had antitrust we had to deal with. So there was a number of we had. We had banks and other things, uh, contracts uh, with many, uh, many people that had to be 
you know, really covered him, but yet we had to keep it confidential. But, uh, you know, overall, the process was terrific. This week you sent an email to uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway uh, uh, customers, and in that email you indicated that they may be seeing some changes as early as this May. Can you give us an idea of maybe some of the changes that may be coming? Well, well let me say this. I've walked every square inch, I think, of this track and places I hadn't walked in the past. And we see a number of areas that we can make a difference. And this is not a difference for us to create more revenue. This is a difference, quite honestly, to make the guest experience better. And I would say to you today that we're going to commit several million dollars on guest experience. We really want to announce those. So some are in process today. We haven't checked them off. but. I would say by 100 days prior to the running of the race, we'll give the fans and you and the people that we really care about in this market, in this region, in this state, you know, what our plans are. But I know you'll be excited.